the Citizen Bike Show. News Commentary Interviews Citizen Mike Show starts now. Uh, let's get to it. Um, special guest first, on my right, Eloise Hazelwood, um, the uh, director of the Wallingford Health Department, and Sean Dougherty, the executive director of the YMCA. Guys, thanks for coming on the show. We appreciate it. Uh, we've heard, we've read in the Record Journal that there is a, a, a new initiative called the Wallingford Health Improvement Plan. You guys know a lot about it, and we want to talk to you um, about WIP, what we're going to call it, WHIP, uh, w -H -I -P, right. Wallingford Health Improvement Plan. Eloise, what is WIP? What is this? Well, the WIP is actually a program that was based on the federal government, Healthy People 2020, and in turn, the state's health improvement plan. And so our foundation is really that. So we looked at their goals and objectives for a healthier community, and we picked out six focus areas to include in our health improvement plan. So ultimately, it's a long-term 10-year plan to have an overall improvement of health. Sean, what are, what are these uh, focus groups? And then we'll get into some additional detail. Um, and while I'm doing that, I'm going to, if you don't mind, yeah. uh, give a shout out to those folks that are really leading, helping us lead the efforts. Well, so. we could do that twice, too. You know, we, yeah, 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 we can do that twice. Maternal, infant, and child health. Um, that is led by uh, Patty Purcell. Uh, from the for Public School System, environmental risk factors and health, as well as infectious disease prevention and control, led by Eloise, uh, chronic disease prevention and control, led by Lynn Feria from Mid-State Medical Center, um, injury and violence prevention, led by Shauna Simon Glidden uh, from the Coalition for a Better Wallingford, um, mental health, alcohol and substance abuse, led by Marlene McGann over at the South Central Substance Abuse Council, and Health Systems is our final one, uh, led by Celestiani and Jane Fisher. Yeah, um, that's a pretty comprehensive uh, list, but, uh, and, and um, the first question that, that, that came to my mind when I began reading about this in the Record Journal is why is, why is this a good thing? What benefits do we hope Wallingford residents are going to get from this organized uh, WIP? So I, I think the primary objective yeah. is to get all of the players, if you will, together in a collaborative fashion so that we can share information, programs that are already underway and happening, and things that um, we want to develop and further expand and to really advertise to the residents. Because there are a lot of things that are happening that individuals don't know based on each one of these focus areas. So that's the key, is not to repeat what's happening, but really to expand upon it and to make sure that individuals in our community know that uh, resources are available. What is the uh, cost of the program and where does the funding come from? The cost of the program really is about our um, WIP liaison and that dollar was actually donated, $3,000 was donated from the Board of Ed, not donated, but dedicated to her time period to pull this all together, as was another $3,000 through a grant through Youth and Social Services. Everybody else on this table is uh, in-kind services. So really, there's a lot of dollar tied into our services that we're providing, not just from the town entity, but also from Sean's entity and all the other players who are here. Yeah, I want to give... Um, um, put a little attention on to some of these nonprofits that mm -hmm. are that are participating. John, um, what are these n nonprofits? I gather have a big role. What are they in in general? And we'll get specific in a minute. But in general, what are these nonprofits doing, and who are they? Um, some of our uh, players uh, at the table um, inc include Mid State Medical Center. Uh, we have Gaylord Hospital, uh, the Coalition for a Better from Wallingford. Um, we also have uh, Spanish Community of Wallingford as yeah. well, um, Masters Mana, you know, and those are just to name a few. We have over 20 um, organizations uh, partnering with us through this alliance. And 
uh, a reason, you know, for today as well as um, our press uh, conference uh, in the fall was to get the awareness out there. And so we're looking for more folks. So let's take the why. You're the executive director, so that's good, um, and we're glad to see it. You've got a couple of many things going. Um, one of them that we were talking about, I think, off camera um, was Upward Bounds. Yes. Yeah, so what is that program that, that the Y is helping out with? All right, uh, Upward Bound is a program for teens, uh, grades uh, six through eight. Uh, we work and we partner with the school system in regards to the um, any kids that are going off the beaten path or need a little support after school. Um, they get a lot of support during school, but what happens after school? Um, they're referred to the YMCA program. It's led by a social worker. Uh, we provide transportation to the Y. Um, they're uh, housed at our y YMCA Rotary uh, Teen Center, uh, led by a social worker. They have talk time. They have recreation time. They get a snack. Um, they're able to use the pool, the Y facilities, but they're also um, able to work with their friends uh, after school and also there's homework time in, in, the, in conjunction with the program as well. program is free, helped by uh, local funders, foundations in, the, in our uh, local area, uh, but how this kind of fits in is under the mental health and alcohol and substance abuse um, is helping those kids, um, uh, with teaching them good behaviors instead of risky behaviors. Yeah, Ralph? You know, under that heading, um, there's been a lot in the paper recently about opioid addiction. Um, people that start on painkillers and then move of course, sometimes to heroin. Yes. Um, and the number of heroin overdoses uh, has spiked over the last couple of years. So I see you've got Coalition for a Better Wallingford involved. They, as Mike would remember, were talking about this years ago before anybody was really acknowledging. So is there, is, is there a component here to deal with opioid addiction or something new? Yeah, so when we have our, our focus series, as you said, uh, Coalition for a Better Wallingford is part of it, as is Marlene McGann, as is our social services. So yes, they're looking at existing programs and they're looking as to how to better identify at-risk individuals. How can you get to them before they become the abuser? What education needs to be passed on to the, regular, to the resident, whether it be a parent or a grandparent? We've heard the message about locking up your drugs, watch your prescriptions. So they have that focus lead. So they are looking at specific items to address those concerns. So it's not that I have the particular information as to what it is that they're doing. They will come back to the table collectively through all the focus groups and share with us as a steering committee what what they're doing to better get that information apart or what programs they're looking to perhaps bring into the town to address some of those concerns. So in, in connection with um, the group, the WIP group, uh, it's keeping on with the opioid problem and this is a long-term plan, right? This is a 10-year or 10-year program. So hypothetically, let's put ourselves five years from now and things have been up and running and going well and you find that there is a spike, even from today's levels, a spike in overdoses, whether it's prescription drugs or, uh, or heroin. Um, how would you find out about that? And how would the WIP group respond in a way that would make a difference? All right, so I can tell you that one of the issues, one of the difficulties that we have here in Wallingford, no different than any other uh, medium-sized town, is getting Wallingford or community-specific data. So we are working with different entities to get that data. For instance, we can get some generic information from our EMS calls, but most of the times individuals are not calling in to say that there's an OD. Their call may be shortness of breath or he passed out and we don't know why. So you have to decipher that down. So it's difficult to get that core data. Yeah, and is there a way of uh, linking up families or individuals that may be at risk for this kind of a problem with specific programs and how would they be brought into um, the organ you know the the organization that you're trying to trying to set up sure again I would have to defer for those who are in that focus area it's not my focus okay. area yeah. so they could speak better to that as could um, Craig Turner from social services as could the coalition um, and uh, Marlene McGann. So that's their focus area. So I don't have the particulars. Again, not my focus area, so I apologize. No. Um, in the news is Flint, Michigan. Mm. And there's uh, lead in the water supply in the city of Flint um, caused by corroding pipes, which is caused by uh, nasty water on the, on the Flint River. And it's a real crisis. So 
because um, lead poisoning is in the water there, do we have any sort of an issue here in Wallingford with lead in the water? We don't have an issue per, per se with lead in the water, but we do have an issue with lead poisoning in children. So when we started this, last year we had 27 children who were exposed to lead poisoning. As of July 1st of this year, we have 10 children who have been exposed to lead poisoning. And we get that data specifically and directly from, um, it's called the state surveillance system, through lab tests. So anytime a child has a blood lead um, greater than five, we get the report of it. Our goal is to do intervention with the parent and the property owner if it's not a, an owner occupied. So we did receive a lead grant um, concerning outreach. Specifically, we're looking at property owners, how to get, um, how to prevent lead poisoning so that the child is not poisoned and how to do it in a cost effective and safe manner so that one, it saves the homeowner and two, it saves the child. We want people to improve their properties and we're seeing a lot of that in town about renovations, redoing your property and that's wonderful. We want to encourage that, but we want to encourage it in a lead safe manner. Yeah, Ralph. You know, just to, to shift the topic, um, obesity is another topic that's in the news a lot, mostly focused on children, although I'm not sure that's fair yeah. um, as I look around me at times. <laughs> um, but can you, you know, I had, uh, I can see here you have some programs that target obesity. Um, one, it looks like for fourth and fifth graders and possibly the middle school. Can you tell us about that? Sure. Um, just to give you an example of some of the efforts uh, under the kind of chronic disease pillar, uh, the YMCA has a program called fit to go um, Again, similar to the Upper Bound program, it's, which is a free program, um, thanks to funders, uh, this fit to go program is for those folks that may not be on a sports team or, or any uh, organized activities after school. Um, may be uh, identified as a, uh, from their PE teachers or guidance counselors or whatnot, need some activities after school. Mm -hmm. um, we get a referral list from uh, the school system, um, both middle school and the fourth and fifth graders uh, as well. And they come to the Y as far as transportation goes. Um, they're led by personal trainers and also a nutrition coach. coach. We have also family involvement and engagement, which is very important to the program. Uh, they do a family cook night and they'll get a recipe and, and the kids will learn how to make, make a healthy meal and whatnot. So that's a good kind of initiative. And getting back to your original point too, uh, a big component of the Wallingford Health Improvement Plan is awareness. And it's building capacity for some of the programs that, are, that all of these great organizations have in place. Uh, but may not know about as far as the community and bringing that awareness out there through marketing efforts and whatnot. Well, can I just add one thing that we, from the adult aspect, is every year we do a healthy Wallingford walk. We do it as part of Celebrate Wallingford and it's not well known and we don't have a lot of people. So there's no fee for it. So you come out and again, the goal is to get people moving. And again, that's everybody, not just children. So come Celebrate Wallingford, come out and walk, join us. Um, getting back to the child obesity yes. that, that uh, we were talking about, can, can something um, really be done to impact that? I mean, it, it, habits might be so ingrained by the time a child reaches middle school uh, that they're obese. Can you really get new habits and new eating habits? And uh, I mean, does it work? And how do you know if it is? Yeah, we do a, a, pro, a pre and post test for each of the programs. Uh, and one of the initiatives you mean on the, on for the kids, you for mean the on, the, on, the, on the kids, yeah. Okay. Um, one of the initiatives to go into the fourth and fifth graders um, was to start the, start the behaviors very young. Um, we do a push-up test, we do a sit-up test, um, and we do a number of tests. There's a total of ten that we start with the kids uh, week one. We also test them at week twelve. So the kids go along with us. I mean, they do. They do. Okay. They do. Um, we keep the program fun. Yeah. Um, it's actually when the fit to go bus comes to the school system, it's something that they look forward to, yeah, uh, and no stigmatisms or anything. Like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So then it sounds like um, I don't want to use boot camp. So let me use the word boot camp. Use the word boot camp. <laughs> use the word boot camp. So what happens when you know it, you know childhood obesity is, is kind of a big thing and. I was outspoken, I don't know, a couple of years ago when the school lunch program was up, so and I said, I don't care what it costs, fresh fruits and vegetables, right. we'll subsidize it. Not everyone agrees with that position, okay. but anyway, back, Sean, to you. Sure. So um, 
is, is this a uh, sort of a boot camp setting? Or I know you said it's fun, but it's still exercise, and exercise isn't fun. It's how you feel afterwards, I think. It can be fun. It can be fun. It can be fun. We definitely, right. our, our uh -huh. coaches make it fun. Yeah. Uh, but they're all, kids are also exposed to maybe the YMCA facilities where they may not be able to. Um, again, it's a free program. They get a membership, and their family gets a membership while during the duration of the program. So they're exposed to a fitness center that they may not be able to get a chance to. Wow, a treadmill and that yeah. kind of thing. So we expose them to the... the um, physical activity in fun ways, water polo and the pool and that kind of thing. So we, we make it fun for the kids. They don't know their exercise and that's our goal. Um, to At the end of the day, they're thinking behaviors wise and they're, they're changing their behaviors. Yeah. The Eloise, I want to get back to something um, you said about uh, lead poisoning. And if you get um, a, a referral um, as a result of the blood tests, um, I gather you're, you get enough information indicating where this family lives, where this child Correct. lives. Walk me through how you might approach the owner of the property and how you might persuade that property owner to eliminate the risk of, of lead poisoning. Sure. So let's, let's take the, the child who's been identified as lead poisoned out of it. Let's take okay. a child or let's take a property owner who owns a property and they want to renovate. So ultimately, what we're trying to do is we're offering free visual assessments to property owners of properties that were built before 1978 so that um, it doesn't impact disclosure laws because we're not taking samples. It's not a lead inspection by, by the letter of the they law. They have nothing to fear from they you? They have nothing to fear. Okay. All, really, what we're going to do is we're going to guide them on how to do simple things to um, protect or an, and to... Um, to reverse chipping, peeling, or flaking paint. And I have brochures out that we send to the property owner. We started a campaign. We have a target area downtown that we are sending to all of our property owners of multifamily housing oh. offering our service. And again, this is grant funded. So um, we have the means to do that now. So we have the brochure. And so we'll go through. We even have the means in the grant to buy some cleaning supplies if they don't have the means to buy cleaning supplies and how to do it in a safe manner. Because ultimately, most of our children are being impacted from lead dust, not necessarily from the lead paint. It's not like you think the kid is eating lead paint. So the child will uh, most of the times go to the windowsill, if you will, the friction area. And we have a lot of peeling or chip paint. As the window goes up and down, it creates dust. It creates lead-laden dust. Yeah. As a child who is younger, say three, three years old, perfect height for a windowsill. So they're looking out the windowsill, which means that they are mouthing the windowsill. They are ingesting the dust that is there. And that's how it gets into their system. So we can talk to the property owner about how to correct that. We, no dry scraping. Dry scraping creates dust. The last thing we want to do is more dust so that they can take precautions now before a child gets poisoned, which will save them money. If a child is poisoned, then the law stipulates that you as the property owner have to hire somebody who's a certified contractor. That's dollar. So we'd rather have the property owner do it now, be proactive, one, save their wallet, and two, save the child. Yeah. Well, you know, we've, we've covered some... Uh, important topics already, which is, you know, opioids, obesity, uh, lead. And if there are people out there that are um, looking for information or the programs you mentioned, I mean, how do they get, um, how do they get in touch with WIP? We have the WIP on the YMCA website, and there's a link on the town website under the health department, which gives the full program um, including the point of contacts for the focus areas so that if they have a particular focus area they're interested in we would prefer from our level that they contact that focus chair but if it's anything that we talked about that's our program specific in my case uh, again my email is on the town website or they can call me directly particularly when it comes to doing a free visual assessment and uh, some of the other programs that the health department is running it was a, sort of a big event in town when uh, the Board of Education authorized a student health survey. Yeah. Yeah. And this was, um, I, think, I think there's maybe two now, but um, we covered it um, on the show, and uh, I, think, I hope we ignored some of the more salient features. But yeah. one, of the, one of the big issues that surfaced was depression, suicide, the mental health of kids. Um, is how, how does your WIP group interface with that sort of problem in the school system and not in the school system. 
Well, I think before we started the show, Sean was very adamant that it's important that we have parental involvement. So yeah. when you're talking children, regardless of what the issue is, you need parental involvement outside of the school system. But our WIP, we have different focus areas and different components. So we have Patty Purcell, who's representing the Board of Ed. We have um, Craig Turner. We have Sean. We have the coalition all looking at different aspects, not just of opiate and substance abuse, but also depression and, and the stresses and where does that lead and how do you address it. So they collectively, again, not my focus area, will be dealing with um, those elements that came up in the school survey. And again, we want to impact that school survey, but it's not just in the school, as you said, it's beyond that. It's parental involvement. So, um, uh, Sean, I don't know if this is a, a realistic hypothetical, but sure. um, let's suppose we have a high school dropout. So they're not being watched by school administrators or teachers. Um, they're kind of on their own. Um, maybe, they, maybe they just didn't finish school. But let's take a hypothetical age 16. Sure. All right. um, and, and they have some, uh, some mental health problems. How might that young person get some help through the, the, WIF, the, the, the WIP partners? How, how would they be brought into um, the, the system, so to speak? Um. Well, there's a lot of good, there can be a lot of different resources available to them, Wallingford Adult Ed. Um, again, um, the, this initiative is to find those gaps. Um, and as you were mentioning, as far as the, the school health survey, um, you know, that data um, and those results comes back and we'll use that. Um, as well as we use the Mid-State uh, Community Health uh, Survey that's done every, every couple of years, um, that data is used to um, analyze the, de the gaps. You just identified a gap. Um, and we're going to, we would, um, that's also been brought up in, in uh, the community health survey. Uh, you mean the child as, not into the young person not correct. in school. Correct. Yeah. So, okay. so now you, you, use, you utilize your resources here, your expertise here, to address, okay, there's no programming. There's no accessibility for folks. I know, how do we get that accessibility out? And you really task these guys and, and these leaders with uh, bringing up an action plan. And really, the community health improvement plan is an action plan, is a is a strategic plan that, uh, and which any, with any good strategic plan, is continues to be changed and and reinvented and, and uh, reviewed um, annually and even less than that, um, just to keep it active and um, keep it fresh, uh, and address the situations that are currently in the community. Yeah, well, well, this this issue of uh, depression among young people, I agree. Um, when that survey came out, I think some people were surprised at the numbers. Um, I was a little surprised, not so much as so, I think because I had raised children yeah. and work with a different generation in the workplace. I work with a lot of younger people. And one of the things about mental health that I notice is that, you know, if you're talking to somebody who's perhaps 45 and up, um, there may be things going on in an 18 to 25 year old's life that are very uh, potentially um, a problem, but that if you're 45 and up, you don't remember them being a problem. And uh, breakups, for example, uh, high school breakups, I couldn't believe how it seemed to me those were so much more seriously taken at times. Um, so is there is there a way to, that you, um, tell parents and adults from a different generation. You know, things have changed. You have to be aware, okay. And, and like uh, Louise was mentioning, and we had mentioned earlier, that um, you know, it's not uh, necessarily a school problem or it's not necessarily no, an organization agree. problem. It's, it's gotta be a collective uh, audience, including and really starts with the parents. It's parent involvement, parent engagement, um, and that's infused into all of these uh, six focus areas. Money. Let's yeah. get back to back to that. Um, you're you're actively trying to score grants. I I, I understand. Um, have you been successful in getting any grants from anywhere? And if so, what have you gotten? Not from the aspect under the under the whip, but I yeah. think individually um, we have grants. Like I have the grant for the lead poisoning prevention. I have right. a grant for falls prevention. And talk, talk to me prevention. about that. What, what's that all about? So we just um, we applied in July. We just uh, this week received notification from the state that the contract has been executed and received. And our goal is really to address um, falls and injuries in the elderly population, i.e., 60 and above, in Wallingford. 
we look to our EMS in town. We're very fortunate we have our own EMS. And um, we know that last year we had 674 calls specific for fall or uh, lift assists. Not necessarily all older, but that's a lot of people in our community. So what we're going to do is we're brokering with our EMS and our public health nurse to do assessments in the home. Again, um, either activate it through uh, when the EMS is there, we'll give information to the patient to say, or the resident to say, would you like an assessment in your home? When the assessment is done, it's, it's threefold. One is the assessment of um, trip hazards in the home. Uh, perhaps it's just as simple as uh, uh, tightening a handrail or putting a stair tread in, telling them to get rid of a throw rug. The other aspect of that home assessment is medication review. A lot of times an individual will not realize that some of the medications are the co-medications will have uh, an impact on their stability, on their gait and one of the other aspects, so that's the one aspect. The other aspect is if there is a gait or stability issue, we will look to get them referred into an exercise program. The um, Committee of Aging has a continuous exercise program. The YMCA has an exercise program specific to gait and stability so that they are stronger so I want to ask about this medication review. Who does that? So, um, you know, my, my example is going to be um, the grandson in California finds out his grandma has fallen, she's living all alone, and, and the grandson you know, somehow gets through to you and says, and she's on all kinds of medications and I lost track. Who, for, who analyzes these to see if they're appropriate? You know, what are their skills for that? Right, so part of the um, falls prevention grant yeah. is we're developing a review tool that the um, EMS provider and our public health nurse will use. So it's the same tool, the same questions that they will go into the home when they get permission from the individual. And they'll ask, well, what prescriptions do you have? It's, sometimes it's as simple as opening the medicine cabinet. And um, I'm not an RN, so I couldn't be able to tell you, but they could look and say, you know, these are, um, you know, perhaps things that are going to impact your, uh, your steadiness because perhaps there's a sleeping pill, perhaps there's something for mood. And if you take them together, you know, does your physician know that you have two physicians prescribing? And sometimes it's as simple as that. Make sure that your primary physician knows all of your medications. Here's your list. Write them all down. Take it to your primary. Let them know everything that you're taking. Yeah. Ralph? Do you want to, um, just to change topics? If yeah, go okay. ahead. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the Medical Reserve Corps? Sure. The Medical <laughs> Reserve Corps is actually a citizen volunteer program. It's a misnomer in that it's medical and non-medical civilians who volunteer their time in time of emergency to help the town. And an emergency could be uh, helping at a shelter if there's a not um, a storm-related shelter. It could be we have an obligation in town to provide mass antibiotics. We, we're called a mass dispensing area. Wallingford is one of 43 in the state, which means that we have an obligation if there's a biological uh, issue in our state. Or What's in, a biological issue? Uh, well, I such as um, I have a biological it's, issue. You're going to be right. scared. Frankly, I don't Ralph. want to scare him. <laughs> frankly, no. Ralph, I, you know, I, no. What's <laughs> so it, it could be something from anthrax, which is what it was uh, founded on. Right. Um, but it also can be an emergent infection, such as we had Ebola in the state of Connecticut. We didn't have individuals. We had individuals who were being monitored. Right. But those monitored individuals took time and they took individuals. If something else had happened in our community, we would need a very large force to deal with, whether it be antivirals, antibiotics, to get it out to anybody who had been exposed to it. And so part of our obligation is to exercise are we call them points of dispensing or pods we have an exercise that's coming up in april and part of our exercise is to get our medications out to our first responders and uh, we're using it as a again a microcosm who are we giving it to now so that we can use that data to say how do we get it out to everybody and we have a town plan that says how would this happen where would you go and so we need to exercise that but we need volunteers to help us do so and those volunteers, um, again, medical and non-medical, and they're not always needed. But the most important thing is right now we have 98 volunteers listed. We need more people. How many do you need? 
um, we need 300 as a minimum. So because if 10% of the people show, that's what we're going to need. And right. we, if we look at that number, we want to make sure that we have at least 100 people strong of volunteers there to help us, whether it be logistics whether it be the administrative side of it or licensed professionals who can help in the administration of such vaccine or antibiotic. So um, we have our five viewers that watch the show. Well, and one of them, <laughs> and one of them. We're hoping for 300 yes. who want to say yes. And, and, uh, and one of them says, you know, being a volunteer tempts me. Mm -hmm. um, what can you say to them now that would get them in, what pitch? Can you give I can them say that, that we are very they? fortunate in that it's not very time consuming, yep. but we need to have your contact information so that if and when something happens, we know how to reach you. We have some trainings that we give. Uh, we offer free first aid, CPR, uh, mental health first aid. So we offer trainings as that uh, incentive to say, come out and be a part of it. Because you might need that first aid, not necessarily for the town, but something might be happening in your own family to where you need to know to learn CPR, and we will train you. So what would be the time commitment over a year? It's so minimal. We do quarterly training. Okay. And um, you know, if, if we have 25 people come out to that quarterly training, we're very happy. Is we just a, happen to have a brochure. Right. right. Well, I'm going gonna, gonna to take this, and I'm going to hand it to Thank Ralph, you. and I expect to see him. On that list. On that. Okay. On that. On that list of volunteers. Um, that sounds like a. That sounds like a good deal. Um, sort of a, a final topic. Sort of a visionary. Uh, uh, in five years, um, where where do you hope to be, Sean, with respect to some of these um, some of these programs, and how do you measure whether or not you've been successful, whether it's all been worth it? Uh, well, at least uh, Eloise was mentioning earlier, as yeah. far as the data, um, um, it's tough to uh, nail down local data, uh, but use, use basically the, the data that we have. Um, that's how you're going to you know, measure your, your, um, your deliverables, that kind of thing. So taking the school health survey, taking the community health assessment from the, school, from the, um, from the local hospital. Um, I would say the, the, the organizational chart that we have now, double, at least double it. Because um, basically, Healthier Wallingford is um, healthier in many different ways. Economically, um, your, your residents are living longer, um, you're attractive to um, folks coming into the community. Uh, so it's only going to improve um, every uh, person within the uh, community. Yeah. And you have um, another way of looking at things as well. Um, what you just did now with handing the brochure off, and you did a referral basis that you had no clue that there was a medical reserve corps prior to today's That's event. Right. Or the v viewers out there today. Right. Our biggest thing is going to be awareness and really pulling together all the resources here today. So we're not necessarily working on silos. We're working together as a collective audience and we're getting the word out there uh, through grassroots. Uh, we have a social media um, presence as well through Facebook, yeah. but also through all of our organizations and how we have our networks. Well, that together. Final thoughts? Well, I think just to go in the other direction uh, from the long term to what's next. What's next for WIP? So we are actually having a meeting on February 18th. 17th. 17th, 17th. sorry. That's all right. February 17th at the Hubcap. It's at 930. Anybody who's interested in any aspect of our focus areas is welcome to attend. We encourage you to attend so that you can have a face-to-face -face with the chairperson of that focus area and get involved. One of the other things beyond that is we are having a stress reduction program that's being led by uh, in partnership with Masonic Charity Foundation and it's called Lifestyle Modification for Reducing Stress and that's going to be held in March but for all of our upcoming meetings and our programs that we're doing you can come to the website the town website under health department upcoming events and all of those will be posted along with uh, Sean's on the Y and the social media so that we can again get the word out and for this meeting that's coming up You'd love some coverage in the Record Journal, wouldn't you? <laughs> that I would made be a, I made wonderful. Love my You'd family. love a little, would be fabulous. A little warm and fuzzy story. A right yes. there. Good, good point, Mike. My plan yeah. comes together. Yeah. Good job. Thanks for coming on the Citizen Mike Show. We both right. appreciate it. Our viewers appreciate it. Good luck with your uh, with your efforts. Um, we're going to check in with you guys again, you know, as the months roll by, maybe with a little phone interview from me, and we'll give you a... Um, uh, you know, we'll give your efforts a little pitch if you give me a two or three cent press release. 
always happy to do it on the Citizen Mike Show. Oh, thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for coming good. on. Thank appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you.